Today's topic is a rule of law. We're going to revise rule of law and practice on how to answer an essay question on the rule of law. Example essay, referring to relevant case law in academic commentary, analyze it Lord Bingham adheres to a formal or substantive understanding of the rule of law. This kind of essay questions are very common in public law examinations. That is why I have selected it. And I believe that you should practice answering this question as much as possible you know, to be prepared for your upcoming exam. Firstly, it is very important that you plan well what you're going to argue in your essay. In the introduction, it should be just mainly definitions, but in total, it should not be more than 10% of the entire length of the essay. The body paragraph should be about 80%, and you have to uh, put arguments there, uh, argue for and against, supporting your arguments with academic commentary and case law. There are a lot of academic commentary uh, for this area of law, and you should know by heart if it's an exam of three hours, uh, but if you have a 24 hour, open book exam, then you don't need to study everything by heart. Introduction. Define a rule of law. In the introductions, you, you don't go into detail, but you do need to put the definitions of the main concepts that the essay is asking you about. A definition of rule of law will be a good start. What is formal conception of the rule of law? what is substantive conception of the rule of law, and thesis statement. Thesis statement should be at the end of the introduction. What is rule of law? Rule of law is a political philosophy. Rule of law, in simple words, means that no one is above the law. It refers to the principle that there must be equality under the law for the rule of law to be effective. It also refers to transparency, independent judiciary, and access to legal remedy. There are two different conceptions of the rule of law. One is formal conception advocated by Dicey and Joseph Rass, or uh, there is a substantive conception of the rule of law as well. You know, that will be discussed later. Formal conception of the rule of law focuses on supremacy of law and equality before the law. For the purposes of the introduction, you don't need to discuss uh, the details. You just have to put the definitions in brief briefly. And you don't need to go into detail. The details shall be elaborated in the body paragraph. The introduction is just defining the relevant concepts that the essay is mentioning. In this case, the rule of law, substantive conception, formal conception, law being views. Those are the concepts that the essay has asked about. Therefore, you just need to define in the introduction, set the scene, and then uh, in the body paragraphs, you'll be able to elaborate. Substantive conception of the rule of law. It focuses on human rights and democratic governance of the state. Finally, mention what Lord Bingham's views on the rule of law. Uh, law must be accessible, intelligible, clear, and predictable. There are these eight principles I have summarized uh, for you. Uh, to know what law beacon views are on the rule of law. Questions of legal rights and liability should be resolved by the law and not uh, the exercise of discretion. Law should apply equally to all. Public, public officers must exercise their power in good faith, fairly and without exceeding the scope of their powers and reasonably. Adequate protection of fundamental rights means shall be provided to resolve civil disputes and without excessive cost delay, fair adjudicative procedures, and state shall comply both national and international laws. Those are two, eight main principles that Law Bingham has advocated for the rule of law. This is statement. The present essay shall critically analyze why Lord Bingham's view of the rule of law should be substantive rather than formal. So in the present, uh, in the thesis statement, you should announce the plan of the essay, what you are going to argue in the essay, which side of the argument are you going to advocate? Body paragraphs. In the body paragraphs, you need to make arguments to show to what extent Lord Bingham's views of the rule of law can be formal or substantive. Make arguments on both sides. 
your arguments must be supported by academic commentary and case law. I'd start with elaborating a little bit more on what is rule of law. Uh, we have um, quotes here from UK's former prime ministers, how they defined the rule of law, David Cameron. The words freedom under the rule of law are simply that uh, they explain everything you need to know about our country, our institutions, history, culture, and even our economy. Margaret Thatcher, the freedom of our people defends, depends fundamentally on the rule of law. So she regards freedom as the fundamental component of the rule of law. And Tony Blair, our values are not Western. They are the universal values of the human spirit. Freedom, not tyranny. Democracy, not dictatorship. The rule of, law, the, the rule of secret police. So he referred to freedom as well as uh, the main component of the rule of law. Formal conception of the rule of law, on the other hand, is advocated by Joseph Ross and uh, Dicey as well. And you need to explain how they have uh, explained the formal conception of the rule, to, the rule of law to be. Joseph Ross in his article, The Authority of Law, stated that the primary function of the rule of law is to ensure that the law should conform to standards designed to enable it effectively to guide action. This means, among other things, the law should be clearly and publicly stated. People must have access to courts to resolve disputes objectively in accordance with the legal principles. And he mentioned human dignity. Human beings should be treated as persons capable of plotting, planning and pushing their future. It is noteworthy that he's not referring to human rights, maybe because uh, his book was published in 1977 and Human Rights Act was passed in 1998. So the human rights is not the fundamental value for Joseph Ross for the con formal conception of the rule of law. But it can be argued that formal conception of the rule of law talks about equality, talks about human dignity, but doesn't refer to human rights as, as such. Are we Secretary of State for the Home Department? And I'm afraid of that. It's a, a case that um, talks about formal conception of the rule of law, Lord Steen. According to the rule of law, it's a requirement that a constitutional state must give the opportunity to people to know about the decision before their rights can be adversely affected. This refers to the principle that law should be published before it can affect uh, it can affect people. It has to be clear and transparent. The following points emerge from Joseph Rice's article, The Rule of Law and Its Virtue. The government in all its actions is bound by rules fixed and announced beforehand. The rules make it possible to foresee with certainty how the authority will use its coercive powers in given circumstances and to plan one's individual affairs because of this law knowledge. Therefore, formal conception of the rule of law is mainly emphasizing on the importance of respecting the autonomy and dignity of the individual rather than human rights as such. To what extent Lord Bingham's view agree with formal conception of the rule of law? We have looked at eight main principles that Lord Bingham has highlighted for the rule of law. So all you need to do is compare the formal conception of the rule of law as advocated by Ross and Dicey and compare with Lord Bingham's views and see differences and similarities. Lord Bingham, similarly to formal conception, argued that the state, state shall comply with the law. The adjudicative processes, basically administrative processes, and right to resolve civil disputes also align with the formal conception of the rule of law. So therefore, some of this principle does align with what the formal conception of the rule of law has, has argued. What about the substantive conception of the rule of law? Substantive conception is advocated mainly by Allen, Trevor Allen, and Ronald Dworkin. Fundamental human rights and principle of equality, that's the main focus on substantive conception of the rule of law. Main principles of judicial review, determining whether 
government action is lawful, it reflects a substantive conception of the rule of law. Courts will strike down the legislation that conflicts with the principles such as the right to a fair trial, right, uh, right to a fair hearing, and the right to freedom of expression. The court's willingness and capacity to uphold such principles are now increased by the Human Rights Act, 1988, where the courts have a right to issue the declara Declaration of Incompatibility under Section 4 of the Human Rights Act. The case of Dali is not noteworthy for substantive conception of the rule of law. A government policy was held to be unlawful because it conflicted with the right to communicate confidentially with one's lawyer. So it, it, this refers to the principle that uh, everyone has to have a right to fair hearing. To what extent Lord Bingham's views can be considered a substantive conception of the rule of law? Lord Bingham talks about the importance of fundamental human rights and compliance. Therefore, because of that, it could be considered that he advocates substantive conception of the rule of law. In the conclusion, you need to sum up your main arguments and answer the question asked. Is Lord Bingham adhering to formal or substantive conception of the rule of law? To what extent? Obviously, there are no definite answers, but there are arguments on both sides. Support your arguments with case law and peer-reviewed journal articles. If it's an exam, peer-reviewed journal articles will not be essential, but if you have it, it will be great. Now I'd like to say a few words about how we can help you, how Simple Studying can help you with your legal studies. Our content creators and tutors are successful law graduates from top UK universities, such as LSC, City University of London, BPP, Keel, University of Leeds. This is all the universities that our content creators and tutors may come from. Uh, we are not associated with these universities, but we hire the best graduates, the, the graduates, law graduates that have achieved high to one or first class grades in their respective legal examinations. In addition to the ready-to-go study materials, first-class study materials done by top graduates, we have tutoring for personalized support. We offer tutoring sessions, one-to-one -one tutoring session that is tailored to every student's needs. You can learn with a tutor how to get high grades, how to do problem questions, essay questions, practice your legal writing, practice your legal skills, legal research skills, legal writing skills, Get some guidelines on your coursework and exams. We have already helped thousands of law students get high grades. 90% of our regular users who have got at least six one-to-one -one tutoring sessions have attended our group revision sessions and uh, uh, have used our materials, got a first class. Uh, and we have already 17,000 subscribers law students from all around the UK. If you want to get a first class, please join Simple Fighting now.